now we are going to start with a new unit that is the motion so first of all that you should know that what actually is the motion so see we have two uh, terms one is rest and other is motion right suppose i have a book lying on the table so i just uh, this thing put the book on the table and after some time when i look at the book it remains at the same position it doesn't change its position with respect to the surroundings so i say that that book is actually at rest because it doesn't change its position with respect to surroundings so it is said to be at rest likewise uh, you have a bed you have a table you have chair in your room so until unless you move it otherwise if you keep at certain place it remains at the same place it doesn't change its position so we say that all those things which do not change its position with respect to surroundings they are actually called to be at rest so what is rest rest is that when body doesn't change its position doesn't change its position with respect to surroundings with respect to means that if we compare it with the surroundings then it is said to be at rest right for example i write here a book lying on a table and now what do i mean by motion suppose if i am uh, this thing standing here for a particular uh, at a given time and after a few time i see that i uh, i move to this point so that means i change my position with respect to surroundings or i am changing my position with respect to surroundings so that means i will be said to be in motion so what is motion motion is that when body changes its position with respect to that means as compared to surroundings then it is said to be in motion for example car moving on a road car moving on a road so it is said to be in motion so this is what is rest and motion i think you got it because these are the uh, specific things which we are going to discuss in this chapter so rest is that when body doesn't change its position with respect to surroundings and motion is that when body change its position with respect to the surroundings for example book lying on a table doesn't change its position so it is said to be at rest and a car moving on a road is constantly changing its position with respect to surroundings so it is said to be in motion so this is what is the rest and motion now what are physical quantities what are physical quantities see physical quantities are those which can be measured which can be actually measured and you know that we express the physical quantity in two things one is the magnitude and other is the unit suppose i go to market and i ask for 2 kg onion i don't say that give me 10 the 10 number of onions or give me 12 onions i say give me 1 kg onion or give me 2 kg onion or like that so here the 2 means the magnitude and kg refers to a unit so likewise every physical quantity possess a magnitude and a unit because they are all physical quantities so whenever we are going to measure physical quantities we are going to measure them in the uh, magnitude as well as a uh, unit and a similar way is used to express them right so these are what is the physical quantities now we see that physical quantities are of two types generally all the physical quantities they are classified into two categories one is scalar other is vector so we say that all the physical quantities they are just uh, classified into uh, two categories into two categories one is scalar other is vector vector now what which physical quantity is said to be scalar scalar one is that which express or uh, or you can say the physical quantity which is expressed in terms of expressed in terms of only magnitude 
that means we do not specify any direction, we just specify the magnitude. And vector quantity is that which is expressed in magnitude as well as in direction. So, the quantity which is expressed in magnitude as well as the direction is said to be a vector quantity. For example, I say 2 kg. So, I am just specifying the magnitude, I am not specifying that north, south, east or west. So, that means that is a scalar quantity. But if I say I travel 2 meters towards north, so what I am specifying, I am specifying the uh, magnitude 2 meters and uh, I am also saying that I am moving 2 meter towards north, so that north is my direction. So I am specifying the magnitude as well as direction, so that means I am that given quantity is a vector quantity. So, scalar is that which is expressed in the magnitude, vector is that which is expressed in the magnitude as well as in with uh, we specify direction. Scalar quantities are denoted by denoted by a symbol like all, all quantities are, but on vector quantities we put arrow. Suppose this if we write a symbol and on symbol we put the arrow. Arrow means that it is uh, it is going to uh, occur in a particular or we can say it is going to occur in a given direction. This is what is the arrow means here. So this is what a scalar and a vector. Moreover, uh, if we say that uh, scalar quantities, they actually can't be plotted on graph. They can't be plotted on graph, but vector quantity can be plotted on graph they can be plotted on graph this you will understand in the higher class and uh, for now if we look for the example so scalar quantity for example we have distance right or uh, scalar quantities we have area we have volume right so in all these cases we don't specify the direction uh, but vector quantity like displacement we have velocity we have uh, force, so like this we have many, many uh, you can say uh, physical quantities as vector quantities. So now as I have told you about scale distance and uh, displacement, so first we are going to discuss that what is actually distance and displacement. They are actually very important though they look like similar but actually there is lot of difference that exists between distance and displacement. So one we have is distance, other we have is displacement. Now what is that? See, suppose um, there are three friends A and this I am plotting their houses. They are actually not nearby, little far from their uh, far from each other. So suppose I say that A wants to go to B house, but uh, the, uh, the A doesn't know that where is B situated. So he first goes to a C house, then both the friends go along to a B house. So what happens? Suppose A wants to go B, but A doesn't know that where B reside. So A first go to the common friend house that is at C. Suppose we say it is 4 kilometer from the place and both then again go together at B house, let us say 3 kilometer. So this uh, the distance which is which the A will travel will be AC plus CB that means it is 4 plus 3 that is 7 kilometer. So what is distance? Distance is total path travelled by body in any direction, here the direction is, does not play a, a role, so to the path actually travelled by the uh, body is called as the distance, so here the total distance is 7. But if I say that A knew the, if, if we say that A actually know the house of B then he does not want, uh, then he would have not gone to the C house, he would have gone directly to the B house, so that means uh, if A was aware of the B house. So, he must have gone straight to his house and let us say the distance between the A and B is 5 kilometers. So, that means here uh, he is going to follow a one direction route and this will somehow will be less as compared to the total path which he travelled when he went to a B house, C house and they both then uh, this thing uh, uh, went together to B house. So, the here AB means the displacement. So, what is displacement? It is 
shortest root as you can say this is shortest this comes out to be 7 and this is actually 5 shortest root traveled by body in given direction or in a straight line or in a particular direction whatever we can use the term so total path traveled by body in any direction is distance and displacement is the shortest route traveled by body in a given direction so here we see that uh, distance uh, that means distance uh, does, uh, distance doesn't specify the direction so that means it is a scalar quantity but displacement occur in a given direction so it is a vector quantity how we are going to denote it obviously both of them are denoted by s but whenever you denote s like this that means it specify distance and when you put arrow on it it means it is a displacement because we know that in vector quantities we put arrows right and we have seen that distance can never be zero distance can never be zero suppose a body is traveling uh, if uh, suppose a body is traveling so any body which moves uh, do not cover distance in order of zero or we can say it can never be zero or negative we never say that we have traveled minus 5 kilometers we don't do that right or we cannot do that actually we say we travel 5 to 10 20 that means in the positive figures so that means distance can never be zero or negative but displacement can be 0, can be positive, can be negative. Now when, when it is said to be 0, suppose if I move, uh, suppose I am standing here, suppose if I move from here to this place, right, and then I turn around and move to the same place, so that in that case my displacement is 0. So whenever body starts from a spe specific point and returns to that given point, then its displacement is said to be 0. Or I can just explain you with a figure. Suppose uh, one body starts from this point, cover a certain distance and then returns to the another the same point. So that means the displacement is going to be 0. So in the same way uh, negative one, suppose if you are traveling a, a distance like this and your final point is uh, on the left side, then your displacement is actually negative. So this is what is the distance and displacement and moreover we can actually like if I wish to calculate total distance. So how I calculate it? By just adding them. So total distance can be calculated by simply adding. But total displacement can't be calculated by same manner because we can actually add the magnitude but then what about direction? We don't, we cannot say that north plus east comes out to be west. So that means the direction, the, uh, the total displacement cannot be calculated by simply adding, right. So this is what is the distance and displacement and if we talk about the units, the units are actually exactly same. Smaller units is meter, bigger unit is kilometer and even its smaller unit is meter, bigger unit is kilometer. The difference lies only in this case that it cannot be 0 or it can, it can, can be, cannot be 0 or negative but it can be, it is scalar vector denote, denotions and moreover it is, uh, it can be in any direction and it occurs in a given direction. It is a long route that is a short route. So this is what is the difference between distance and displacement. Now we are going to study more terms.